That's the power of the cameras of life, people. Oh my gosh, no way. <laughs> 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 What's the tune for this week? <laughs> I actually can't think, bro. You actually said <laughs> you actually don't have a song for this week. Oh my no, god! What happened? I'm guessing you didn't listen to a clash this week or anything to inspire you. Do you know what? I feel like this week has been bizarre. bizarre. Why? It's yeah, just bizarre. Been quick. It's just yeah. Been, it's just yeah. I think I don't know if because I've just been focused on kind of like work and stuff. So. It's just I haven't really I haven't really done much actually. I'm not gonna lie. In terms of like, I've barely, I've barely been out on walks. Usually I go for a walk every single day. This week I haven't or this last week I haven't been on as many walks. I haven't really I've barely watched things. I've barely I've kind of like just done work and yeah, basically what we do as well. I don't know. I don't know. I totally agree in the sense that for me it's been also been a bizarre week. As in like I can't remember last week. <laughs> No, honestly, honestly, that's actually what I'm thinking. I'm feeling. I feel like the days have gone really quickly the last few days. Why do we think that? I, I, I'm just trying to think. think. Go on. I, I think it's because I'm kind of anticipating the end of lockdown. It feels like it's the end. Like it feels like it's the we're coming to the getting back to normal life stage. And I don't know if that's because people are barely following the rules anymore, or if it's because we're starting to hear that things are opening up. So I'm seeing a lot of people out on the social medias. People are linking up and. It just seems like it basically feels like lockdown is over, even though technically it's not. But I've just seen bear man out, bear people out. When you say that, though, like, surely even when we started, there was bear people out as well. I know, but I think the last week since then, since the announcement, it's changed and people's mentality is, yeah, I'm just going to be out. I don't, I've seen kids out like on, like when it was before, you know, like usually when it's like summer holidays and you see kids out with their friends on their bikes and stuff like that. That's literally what I've been seeing. It just feels like, it just feels like, no, like a normal summer like summer holidays you know, we said from a few episodes ago that we've come to a point where people are no longer scared we've passed that initial s stage of fear so yeah again people are f in finding this lockdown phase normal and they're like they're less cautious and thinking all right this could kill us they're thinking oh okay they've been locked inside their house for so long away from any sites of danger any sites of potential death they've not been in the hospital whatnot so they're thinking it's normal they're thinking everything is good they're seeing on the, on the news they're seeing on their on the internet that people are talking a lot about leaving so they're thinking hey look everything's good outside it's time to leave and it's everything's all good now we're <laughs> <laughs> gonna go back to normal basically that's what they're thinking psychologically no I, I, definitely i think people are thinking we've been in lockdown for two months mate i'm going out it's just and it's not right but i think it's not necessarily therefore because it hasn't been clear guidance it's just been stay inside but don't go outside or stay inside but don't stay inside go out don't, don't go outside <laughs> Do you know what though? Do you know, do you know what, I mean? what though? It's that that mindset has is what led to the protest the other day in Hyde Park. Have you heard about that? I roughly, I think I think I've heard about it, but I didn't look too much into it's it. It's mad. <laughs> it, it, you did you see the clips in America first of all? The, I saw the, we talked about the where people were protesting outside the gym about opening up the gyms, and I saw some other clips. What happened in Hyde Park was the British version of that. Basically, <laughs> it's so bad, man. It's just like people are just like, oh, we've got the right to do whatever. The, all of this is. Uh, it is false news it's just the government trying to control us sort of vibe is what that protest was all about and i was just like wow but to be fair again i'm surprised it took this long for something like that to happen to be honest <laughs> I i'm surprised i thought it would have happened a lot earlier to be honest with you so in a in, in a way it's just like all right cool but the fact that we lasted what six seven weeks without any protests that level happening okay we did a this decent job this see the reason i'm surprised because i wouldn't i wouldn't have expected a protest because it's kind of like this <laughs> it's a pandemic <laughs> but bro you have too much of a high you're too kind to some of the people like, I mean I'm not surprised some people don't see the world the way that they that we see it and so on and yeah and that's that's fine but also the social should be kind of like sense in what you do so why are you protesting protesting to go out when there's a pandemic when people are dying like do you not see what's happening do they you don't see, see the it news, do you? they don't they don't yes. <laughs> They don't. It's like, okay, so basically look at it this way, right? Think of it in a war. Say it's a war, right? And we're supposed to all stay inside, stay undercover, stay. And we're people going to protest, oh, we don't want to stay inside, even though there's a war going on. That, do you know what I mean? Now, what these it's, people it, will be saying is, there's not a war. It's all a, uh, it's a lie for the government to control us. That's what they'd be saying. <laughs> do, you think, do you think people are just too mistrusting? Mist mistrusting? Mistrusting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I, I think so. I think so. I mean... Again, a lot of people believe what they hear and maybe for some people they might have previous experiences which 
they might feel is justified not to trust the government or anyone. And again, there's a lot of people who just like to rebel against anything. Do you know what the funny thing is? It's actually not just this country. So it's not just here. It's not just America. It's, I saw a video over the weekend about a wedding somewhere in Nigeria. Right? Yeah. So, so these people decided to have a wedding anyway in a, in a bloody pandemic. It's like, mate, come on. So they had a, a normal, basically a normal wedding and... The video was basically the, the police shutting it down. Literally, the guests were running away, trying to not get arrested. And it's like, so you knew what you were doing wasn't right, but you still went ahead and did it anyway. How do you how do you have your wedding in a pandemic? I don't, I don't like, as in like, why don't you just do what other people are doing and do it on Zoom or have a smaller wedding? And then maybe if, when this is over, have a bigger party or something like that. Like, do you know what I mean? It's it's almost disrespectful because fair enough, you're in love or whatever, but your love is not more important than, than the thousands of people who are dying. You know, it's just people need to have some people need to have some some perspective on on life and kind of like what's what's more important. Hundred percent. I think it's been interesting just observing human nature during this whole event. Like I said, not everyone shares the same common sense. Everyone sees things differently, and I guess you definitely see the different spectrums of human life in a social aspect like there's loads of people who are like see the hurt that they can do to other people and they're like okay cool we'll back off we're gonna abide by all those suggestions from the government health health advisors but all right cool others people don't see it and they in terms of prioritization they see all right cool you know i'm not affecting anyone when they don't you know they're not enlightened to what the true effects are yeah no i think it's 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 crazy it's it's for me personally i like i said i like to i'm like uh, someone who likes to sit and observe life as it happens and it's just it, it's pretty mad to see the different reactions from people and like i said i'm not surprised that we have people like this because that's just human life that you're gonna get people you're not no no one's perfect no one's gonna react in in one specific way you're gonna get that no matter what the situation is right like not everyone agrees with everything you can't get everyone to agree on one thing that's just how life is except for our last poll that where for where we asked the, about women's football legit like <laughs> the majority said no on that but that's probably the one time i've seen 100 go one way but anyways <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true. like even on my poll mondays that i do i don't think i've ever had everyone choose one thing ever before and i've been doing this for years there's always it always splits opinions no matter what it's pretty interesting isn't it it's funny because on social media right people will disagree with anything you could put you could say literally anything and people will be like yeah but yeah but this you could be like the sky is blue yeah I'm like yeah but it's not blue because i'm colorblind and <laughs> I'm like, okay fair <laughs> enough but do you know what i mean and people people are always it's, it seems like people are always looking to just argue or to debate or just oppose any any situation or just to put a comment in and it, it's like having strangers basically comment on your life because just because this on social media they feel they have the right to and it's just it, it's quite toxic actually like you need to be very, i think people need to be very careful about how much time they spend on social media because it, it can be very damaging if you keep reading all sometimes i literally read i literally read comments on twitter youtube instagram and i'm literally like this is the world i live in this is mental this is this is this is actually sad do you know what you're 100 right though because have you seen like that's why you get things trending like do you remember the dress people like is it gold is it whatever oh yeah is it gold and green ago. yeah or, or I, the... I, yeah I, remember, I know what you're talking about i can't actually remember the colors There's that's something why like... things like that always go trending because people love to debate <laughs> people love <laughs> to argue i think everyone always wants to be they don't want to debate and come up with a common cause it's like we want to debate and i want to win the debate i don't care if i'm right or wrong i want to, i want my point to come across and it's like not it's yeah it's just like it's just well that's just social media for you actually it is what it is but i think we need to have healthier habits online and i think people need to need to realize that, that the way you behave online isn't necessarily like it should be a reflection of how you you wouldn't behave the you you wouldn't behave that same way that you do online in real life so i don't know if you saw it but ian wright who's a former footballer for arsenal basically basically took screenshots of his dm the other day where some random kid literally ra not even a conversation with him the kid just basically started sending him racist comments and just, when you say kid as well it wasn't a kid though was it though James? No, it wasn't I, it was he was 18 years old 
<laughs> that's not a kid, is it? I mean, no, no it's not. And it's that like, age? You wouldn't do that in real life. You wouldn't come up to someone in the middle of the street. Actually, what well, some people would, but he he probably wouldn't have done that. He wouldn't have gone up to him in the middle of the street and started shouting racial comments at him, calling him this, calling him that. And it's like, why do you think you can do that on social media? Why do you it's think? It's mad. Bro, what fast, what to... baffles me about that is though the fact that someone told me his best friend was black or something, and I'm just like, wait, what? Yeah, so, yeah, it was. Yeah, the, is yeah, that true? Was like, whoa, yeah. Apparently, so one of his one of I don't know if his best friend, but definitely does on his, on the kid's social. I keep saying kid on the on the man because he's a yeah, man. Legit, legit, he's a man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on on his on his social media there was pictures of another black I guess his friend and so he's like basically it's, it's it's like me finding out that one of my good friends has been racially abusing someone and I'm like I thought you were my friend I thought I've known you for years why would you then suddenly do you know why what I mean he, why I'd would like, you do that like, what was his I, don't, I don't know you I, honestly he literally just no no prior conversation no nothing just I, you know what I'm bored today let me go let me go racially abuse someone wow that's do you think that's social literally. media just brings out the true that true person inside someone I think some people definitely wouldn't behave like that in real life it was so whether that's their true self or not only they know because you could argue that maybe I didn't I can't even argue anything I don't know what would bring out the, the racist in you <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know it's yeah it just it doesn't make sense to me honestly we're well, talking about social that. media it brings us nicely onto the fact that it's mental health awareness week yes in the UK yeah I think it's important. It's good that it's becoming more, it's becoming normalized. And I think it should, be, it's, I'm, I'm hoping it gets to a point where it's literally the most, people can just talk about issues and situations without any sense of judgment or feeling like people are feeling some kind of way about them. And basically, we don't want any stigma on mental health disease because it's just like your your it's just like your body. So when you when you when you're ill, right? No one looks at you some kind of way apart from oh, like bless you, you're ill. Hope you recover quickly. Blah blah blah. So why can't we have that same mindset towards mental health illnesses and be like and have that same sympathy for people? When... It's because people can't see it though, right? <laughs> I mean, how, how do you prove you've got a mental illness other than getting a psychoanalysis, of course? But otherwise, it's just like because people can't see the actual effects of mental illness unless you truly know that person unless you truly had the chance to assess it then that's what i mean though like to the casual person you in comparison to normal illness it's not as easy to detect like that's why they say that's why they say you never know what someone is going through behind closed doors because it's so easy to shut yourself out away from others in a mental perspective definitely um yeah no you're right i think it's, it's quite hard to define it it's, it's hard to tell apart from even when the person does say that they're suffering with this or that um i guess maybe the people the people around them would know if they've changed like if their if their behavior has changed if they're acting different if they're not being themselves you, maybe you might notice and i think do you think that also we should also maybe it should be taught more so we are able we are a bit more so we can recognize it in other people so we can then for example someone so for example say i'm living with someone right and they start to the mental health starts to deteriorate or something like that right but because i've learned about these these issues i can i can see the symptoms and the signs and i can help maybe do you know what i mean so maybe i could help them um with some easy things that or direct them to someone who could help do you know what i mean just it's not just because I think, for example, right now, so if someone I knew was suffering mental health, um, I what would what would I do? I'm not I'm not actually sure what I would do apart from maybe tell them to go see someone. But then it's like, who do you see? You know, I don't think it's if if someone is ill, there's an emergency. I know it's called nine nine nine. If someone is if someone is 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 depressed or is is has is anxious, what do I? Do you know what I mean? Like I know. You do can, you think like, they should set it up in like one of you know how obviously with the nine 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 and whatnot? Like there are obviously numbers for people to call if they've got if they're suffering through a, a downward spiral. In, in a mental aspect but do you think if there was like an established line yes like a, a well like known and something yeah. like 999 where there's I know there's like the Samaritans which you can call but do I know the Samaritans number off by heart no I, I mean of course I'd have, I, I can google it but if you're something as easy as one 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 or one of you know one of those numbers that we use for not like emergencies or not, you don't want to go to the hospital. But it's just so like what's this? Is it, it, is, it like is it on? Is it on the like on the soundboard? Do you know the options? Like, is it one of the options you can pick already? Because I don't really know. I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure. 
I'm not sure either. But yeah, no, I think that would be helpful. And I think also if there were, you're 100% spot on with that. Like if they were to teach kids as well back in school of like signs and aspect, take it from in a serious manner in terms of, they have psychology lessons, I think, nowadays. So I think that's something that could be implemented because as a society now, if you were to compare it from 10 years ago, we are definitely taking it a lot more serious. But obviously there's so much more that can be done and should be done. So you're 100% spot on with that. That is something. I think that you educational system needs to change in general i think the the world has changed and pe- there, maybe there's some things that should be put on the curriculums and some do you know what i mean so we live in a more diverse world we live in a world where it's a lot more technology based so kids should be able to learn about all these kind of things and i think and things like not like mental health should also be you know when we, when we, i don't know if you remember but you know back in school there used to be kind of like sexual health clinics and there was um like citizenship, like citizenship classes and all those kind of different subjects mental health should definitely be something that is taught in one of, in some of those subjects just to, i mean i don't know if it is i haven't been in school for a while now so i might it may, it might already be in schools and i don't know um but i i haven't heard of it so if it if it, if it already has then obviously my comment is invalid but if it isn't maybe it'd be an interesting thing to add to the curriculum so when kids grow up being able to talk about how you're feeling is normalized and things like boys don't cry or only girls cry and all that kind of stuff can be eradicated and kids can grow, can grow up to be able to show emotions and not build not hold things inside and because males i think men under the age of 40 are the big like the biggest group of like suicides or something like that um because men aren't allowed to be aren't allowed to basically show their feelings you know they're not allowed to talk about if they're sad when i say not allowed you know what i mean it's not like you're not allowed to but it's like a social stigma against it where men are not expected to be emotional do you think it's improved a little bit though like if you were to look at from our social circles definitely i think not i think some celebs talking about how they're feeling have probably made it a lot more easier when you say for- celebs though i I'm, I think you're totally right like but especially those are that are effective like for example for like guys like us people who who are supposed to be let's say hard nuts talking about let's say vulnerable moments that does help a lot because obviously guys look up the uh, can you name me any because I can't think of anyone on the top, off the top of my head like Idris Elba is one possibly I can think of anything so else? I think like I think like Gary Lineker some of some ex-footballers and Danny I meant Rose, hard nuts in there um, I said hard, hard nuts oh bro. hard nuts oh right I think you just meant <laughs> men I think you talking about like celebs in general who kind of like no, but I mean, people who you don't, issues. people who you wouldn't expect to come out and say, "Look, you know, it's it's it's, it's fine to do this. Uh, it's you know, you should do. Don't bottle stuff up." People like, oh, who, who was oh, it? Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury. That's it. That's, that's a the great main example. Hun- that's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant example. Yes. Yeah, people like that. Yeah. So when they talk about their issues that they've been through, it's very inspiring. Like Tyson Fury's stories is so inspirational. Honestly, I'm a fan of him just because of his story, and I think it's changed. I feel like I, I mean, growing up, I definitely had that belief that men didn't cry boys don't cry it's it's kind of like it's a girl's thing to do it's a woman's thing to do but as i've got older i think i've embraced the fact that you can be emotional and it's okay to talk about how you're feeling i mean I, I, <laughs> it's funny i still can't cry but i think i show a bit more emotion than i probably would have if i if it hadn't been normalized i don't know if you if you if you know what if you see what i'm talking about if it's similar for you as well well i mean growing up i was kind of brought up in an environment where i was taught definitely i mean naturally i i wasn't growing up as a kid i wasn't shy to be a bit emotional but i was it was kind of let's say taught out of me to be less emotional I, I i just grew up in that sort of social circle where it was like if you were to cry that's it you're you know that that's you done for basically do you know what i mean yeah but i think when i say emotional right i'm talking about being vulnerable because and for example no because you grew up in that environment where you couldn't show any sort of vulnerability the only the only the only emotion that you're allowed to show is anger growing up as a as pretty a much teenager pretty or, much as a teenager. you can't show anything else apart apart from anger if if you cry if you cried or you were sad it was it wasn't but i think now it's a, it's a lot more accepted and i think for example some of my friends like some of my friends and some of the friendships that i have i think it's i can i can speak to them if i'm sad or if i'm upset about something and it's not i won't feel judged Whereas when I was a lot younger, I definitely wouldn't have, you wouldn't have found me talking about, I'm feeling this kind of way today. I kind of basically tough it out and get along with it or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I think will be quite an effective idea that we can do in, I think something that we should definitely do as down in the future is probably speak to someone who is in a in a lower age group to us and see how it might have changed from our time to theirs 
I mean, obviously, you know, we're not even old, but still, is is I think it'll be pretty cool to see what is because I'm I'm quite I am curious to know what it's like in in terms of like social interactions in school now, like how it might have changed from our time to 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 what they're going through now. Like, are they are they actually a lot more a lot more open to being emotionally vulnerable and like being open about their feelings, whatnot? Like, or is is it is it are we only think, thinking that it's better now because we've grown old? We're in that stage now where everyone should be expected to be a lot more mature. Like, maybe it's still like that in schools where people are, are, aren't as open, where they're like, you know, you should still be, have that tough mentality. Is, is that what what the case is? Are we only thinking it's better because you know we've grown up? Where yeah, because everything changed, around yeah, us. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe we don't. We, be, maybe it'd be worth. That definitely would be worth maybe having a conversation with someone and asking them how they feel about, and also basically the older generation as well. Someone a lot older and talk about how they think life has changed since they in the last, like kind of like their their viewpoint on how life has changed in the last 10, 20 years in terms of the emotional side. I think that would be an interesting conversation to have. We'll do that soon. Now talking about school, we were just talking about the fact that lockdown is easing. Uh, one thing they're potentially going to do in the UK is restart the primary school, I believe, and and potentially the secondary school by the first of june yes so they so they said from the first of june it'll be year r which is reception year one and year six which is the last year of primary school and it's quite interesting because if you're talking about having social distance between people why are you gathering year r's and year ones <laughs> together <laughs> because you imagine telling a four-year-old or five-year-old to stay away from their friend like you sit here and you sit two meters apart i honestly don't i don't know how that would work so that age group is particularly interesting but i also under, maybe understand why because i think maybe it's the so their so their parents can go to work i think that's probably the thinking behind this so it's all about basically getting people back to work and getting them back to work is giving their plates their their kids a place to be at. and whether you agree with it or not i think that is the reason why they're doing it because there's apart from that there's actually no reason why you would do that that is a good so, good uh, perspective that yeah. i think so uh, people keep saying oh but there's no evidence that kids spread it as just like adults and uh, you can also back um argue that there's also no evidence that they don't spread it as much as adults you know so you can't just pick one side and be like oh no, there's no evidence against it what about the other side there's no evidence about that as well so i don't know where the science behind the decision is but i definitely think there's an economical decision behind that which is yeah it always comes it always comes down to the money it always comes down to the economy and and all that so and yeah like i just don't understand why they would bring them back because it's I not mean, safe to you there is fears that we might be in this predicament for like almost up to a year to maybe even longer 18 months potentially so they're thinking if 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 we're in that same situation for this long there is no way the economy or anything will survive or if it does survive it will be in a catastrophic sort of position so they're thinking of ways to adapt is what i'm thinking and obviously uh, in uh, adapting in an economical sense so apparently in denmark kids have already gone back to school and i think the uk apparently is trying to follow how denmark did it and apparently it's working well in denmark so they're also looking at sweden who didn't even have a lockdown but the yeah, thing sweden is didn't have a lockdown at all. <laughs> but the thing is that we we were already in a worse position than these other countries there was a study where they looked at Sweden and, and Denmark and Norway and how they had a, a more relaxed approach and then they compared it to the UK and if the UK were to do a similar approach they said that it will probably be in a catastrophic position because we're not in we're not set up in the same way to allow us to come off in, in, a, in a better with a better result so we there is no reason for us right now to be looking at them as examples of how they're doing and we should not be looking at them and thinking oh uh, we'll be fine <laughs> because we won't be if we were to relax everything damn because th 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 with scientifically and medically speaking when it comes to pandemic situations there will be a second and third wave it's like it, it is it does it will happen and this is something that is a known evidence from previous outbreaks if we basically open our arms and be like yo we're, we're good come through it's gonna hit us hard but if we time everything right then we're in a much better position for any sort of preceding waves to not affect us as much and this is all coming from the world health organization as well anyways so yeah and my thought has always been that i, I, I get asked a lot like are we going to be in this situation for for a, a while and like why can't we just ease lockdown and then like when can we officially not worry about 
COVID anymore? When can we officially? I think it'll be a while. It'll be a while, but we are basically looking at the vaccine to be released. What we're waiting for is that vaccine. It's when we have that vaccine where we can be like kick back a little bit, not not overly relaxed, but that's when we can be like, okay, we're heading in a direction where we can see the end of the, the light at the end of the tunnel. But again, you're right. It takes a while, but. In so when it for example when it came to Ebola as well like when it comes to these situations the so usually uh, education our <laughs> I, I suppose but like when it comes to vaccines it usually takes years for them to be developed and and released but when in the moment of a pandemic situation this process gets fast tracked and so as well as the money that's been pumped pumped into it will be multiplied on on a major level so there is hope that and this is why you see reports of uh, um, like people hoping or scientists hoping that whatever vaccine can be released within six to eight to 12 months rather than it being the standard because all the processes of paperwork etc gets fast tracked and that's what i'm hoping is by that time we can somewhat move back to more of a normal life because you know there was a report saying today that the premier league doesn't expect for fans to be allowed into the stadium for at least six to 12 months (laughs) or it might have been even longer than that i can't even remember that's long can you imagine it's it's crazy because it means life after life is just going to change life is just going to be different you can't you're not going to be seeing any gatherings for a while you ain't gonna see festivals concerts sports and um, sporting events all that kind of stuff happening anytime soon and well, I, well until at least the vaccine is ready so we're gonna have to uh, find other ways to gather i guess and i guess that's so we're gonna so a lot of us are gonna we're going to be doing so you know how like we've been having conference meetings and stuff on zoom and microsoft teams and skype and etc etc maybe it'll be a case of now that's how we're gonna be watching concerts we're gonna be watching concerts online but do you think this could lead to basically new technology being because i feel like whenever there's a situation someone will create something well i can tell you purpose. yeah yeah yeah. it's already happening so basically the industry i can't obviously say too much but the industry that i'm in at the moment they are it's one of the most it probably is the most affected but they are looking at ways to boost numbers by pretty much identifying potential cases of those who are infected and and allowing more higher gauge of customers so every industry is looking at ways to to adapt Adapt, adapt to the situation and technology yeah 100 percent is going to be a big part of it so yes the answer to that is definitely yes um the other thing is the fact that i also saw a, a journalist say today that oh it's a lie that when people say our lives are gonna be changed forever in sweden norway blah 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 they're all living back to normal way of living but that's also not 100 percent essentially true like yeah sure restaurants and gyms and whatnot are reopening but uh, in a lot of for example in italy uh, the the restaurants that have been opening they only allow you're not allowed to sit close to everyone has to be socially distance in the gym they've got all these barriers the, these glass barriers have you seen them right and then having like for example these uh, uv pods which which clean or sanitize your phones and so on so yes there is we are somewhat going back to a normal way of living in some countries and whatnot but there is a massive difference in how we're going back to these activities like imagine for example cinemas as well like for a while you're not going to be allowed to sit within close distance to everyone else if, if cinemas open for a certain period people will have to sit at a an accepted or, or a, an appropriate distance so things like that like it will change it will change no definitely definitely i think it'll be interesting to see how it just would be interesting to watch the change and just to sit back and see how things change i mean obviously not sat back because you're going to be going to be involved in it because we're living as well but it'll be interesting to kind of like sit back maybe even look at in the last so maybe in five years time basically just think about how life has changed due to COVID, how covid changed the world in the last five years because What's different about this compared to other um, outbreaks like Ebola is that this affected the whole world. You know, Ebola basically was in some parts of Africa. SARS was in, like basically in Asia, you know, so whereas this has affected the whole world. So there's not so there's not one continent where there hasn't been a COVID case or, or do you know what I mean? So it'll be interesting to see how we as a global community adapt in the, to this in the future and see how the world changes in the future. Because I've read somewhere that this could be a lot more normal. So well, when I say basically there could be a lot more outbreaks in the future. So maybe this is kind of like a way of kind of like how do we, yeah, how do we get, try for the next pandemic basically. So how do we make sure the next pandemic we're, we're a lot more efficient and be able to save more lives? And, do you know what I mean? So it's, like realistically speaking, this is always bound, you're absolutely right. Like it, or yeah, like this is bound to happen. It's, it's going to happen more often as well because just look at the, 
the population numbers and if you look at it from an epidemiological f- field the, this was always going to happen in terms of let's say lack of space i don't know i don't, I don't know what, yeah no I get up. Yeah. and, and all, all, all of those these things it was always going to happen and in t- in terms of like the fact we're, we're not we're not regulating the mixing of these wildlife animals in certain places it's going to happen like in, ter- in terms of like china wherever it's not just just to pick China up, but it's happening in many other countries where we're not re- properly regulating regulating the, the 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 interaction of these animals, and so and in terms of virus outbreaks, in terms of looking from a historic aspect, a lot of them has come from the crossing or the bridging of viruses from animals to humans. That's the ones that's been most effective against us. And so, if this carries on in terms of a lack of regulation, then it's gonna bound to carry on happening. Mm. So basically, there was it's about film kind of... that was similar to this. Wait, what was it called? Ah. Oh, um, Contagion. Yeah, 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 with Matt Damon. Yeah, and there was another yeah. film about like overpopulation and the issues that can bring as well. So it was it was always looked at something that could be a potential occurrence, and the fact that a lot of let's say politicians never took it seriously as something. Because we weren't, you're right, we weren't well prepared for it, were we? As much as the World Health Organization tried to, even now, like the World Health Organization, a group of specialists are telling you, like, this is what will happen if this doesn't happen and so on. But really, no one, no government is really listening. It's funny because Obama actually, so there was a speech from Obama, which has been which had been going around recently of like a few years ago where he basically talked about getting prepared in case of an in case of a pandemic so i guess it's not really a surprise to people but people haven't taken it seriously and be like you know what let's prepare in case it does happen since there's a chance that this kind of thing could happen in the future because of how we are living now but no one decided you know what let's make it let's make a plan in case it does happen you know yeah we're basically all just uh, winging it for example ba- basically <laughs> with the football basically as what we're gonna lead to now which is my next question did you what was your thoughts on the Bundesliga restarting it was nice to watch football I, I watched a couple of games it was nice to watch these games it wasn't obviously it wasn't the same it was just a bit weird to not hear the crowd cheering when the goals were scored and all that kind of stuff I'm st- as much, even though I did watch it and maybe I'm a hypocrite for watching it I'm still against the idea if it's not safe to do it because like I said they're going to be testing these footballers every week apparently right To but there isn't enough test for the nurses and doctors and the other healthcare professionals who are saving lives and in my opinion they should come first so until we've got to a point where all these people can get can get tested regularly and we, and we can keep many of them as safe as possible what do you know what I mean? Like, what makes footballers more special? Like, they're not vital. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They're not vital to our survival, whereas the doctors and nurses are. Ah, they're the ones that are keeping us alive. And they should be treated with, they should come first. And it's just, for me, it just shows kind of like, it's always money comes first. It's always, we think more about the financial aspects before we think about the safety of the people who are caring for us. Yeah, I, th- I think for me as well, like, uh, before the match started, right, I was like, yes, football's coming back. I was like, whoa, that part, there was that, that part of me but then as soon as it started and i was watching it <laughs> first five minutes i was like this really isn't the same this is weird <laughs> what you hear is like literally it was basically like fabregas put it this way it's, it's basically a training match and it, he said that a lot of footballers are from this period are going to start to realize the power that fans bring to football like they make a massive massive difference and yeah, it just felt odd obviously i was enjoying watching i was cheering on dortmund so it was nice to watch them win anyways but again it's just not the same it's just not the same at all yeah so i i don't know i and for, for, i think if you were to th- put yourselves in the shoes of the footballers you can tell that some of them were just like really happy to be back on the pitch I, I, right and i think there is a different let's say mindset between the german footballers and the english footballers we talked about this last week a lot of english footballers are not refusing but they have voiced dis uh, concerns about coming back but i didn't really see that in the german footballers do you think that's also because i mean i don't know but do you think that could be because of the way it's been handled as well so german germany were a lot more efficient in handling this situation surprise, surprise. Than, 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 we, <laughs> than we have well you can yeah of course german efficiency you can always count on that but, <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but, 
But um, my point is, maybe that's why there's a lot more trust over there. I mean, we don't even know if there's a lot more trust over there. <laughs> we're, just, you know, we're just looking for the outside. We're assuming. That's, yeah. We're assuming. So we, we, I mean, we could be wrong for all you know. But if we're saying that these guys looked a bit more happy to be out there, maybe it could be a case of they handled the disease and not many people, not as many people have died over there. So to them, it's not a as drastic or as devastating as it is here. So if footballers over there maybe just feel a bit more comfortable playing than the footballers here. So footballers over in, footballers in Germany probably maybe feel a bit more comfortable playing because of the way Germany has handled it and maybe footballers here who probably are looking at it like we haven't really settled this issue this this there's still people dying every day there's still doctors and nurses who are struggling and we, we don't want to come back and make it worse you know I don't know yeah, I don't know yeah, we, no, no, you're right. like speculating you're right we had a spike just a couple of days ago in terms of death exactly. so we're not even out there as well so no we're not and th- that's why it's it's, it's not easier for the, it's, 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 it's tougher in the, for the Premier League to come back we were asked this question from one of our listeners Matt who asked us how do the Premier League or UK football restart obviously just this past coming day they the Premier League have outlined the first phase which allows players to begin training I don't know if you saw but apparently um, so they're only allowed to train for 75 minutes a day and they're going to be monitoring them so in this first phase yeah that's that's right that's right and also if I saw I think I saw the United players basically they returned for roughly an hour or less than even they, they just went in to do their testing and if they passed that then they were free to go back into it's not even normal training it's what do you say 75 minutes right uh, and, and that's basically that all within a an enclosed smaller group as well all in different groups of training circuits so that's that's the first phase so they've already some of them have been training together anyway just in like public parks and stuff like that so yeah once basically boris good old boris was like you can go to have unlimited training that's when he saw players going out in the parks and so on yeah that that's true I, I mean obviously a lot of footballers had to keep in shape but for them they've got they've got their own personal gyms anyways lucky son of a <laughs> <laughs> Like Pogba, have you seen his little pitch? Yeah, yeah, it's impressive. Oh, man, that's well cool. Imagine it being his little boy growing up, and then basically for him, that pitch is a full-grown pitch, you know, <laughs> at his age. That must be well cool, man. He's going to get older and be like, wow, this pitch is so small. <laughs> <laughs> if I was to ask you, yeah, how, how do they restart football in the UK? What would be your game plan? Honestly, I would say wait until we're way below the we're way below um and the nhs can handle everything i mean i wouldn't say wait to a vaccine because that could be years and that could be a long time away but definitely give it a bit more time and not but, I don't but want, i'm pushing i'm gonna have to push you there though uh, we can't be losing any more money mate true we need to come back now we we can't give it a, a six months 12 months no i wouldn't say that long though i would say i would, I was literally even thinking maybe like a couple of weeks longer or a month longer just another so, month we've already yeah. been out two months three months but did People are still dying every day. There isn't until we see no new deaths. Based that's, on, that's not my opinion. I'm just I'm just role playing. I know, I know. It's no. I know it's, it's just a hypothetical. But they don't they don't care about people dying though. We've seen that already. Are you telling me if the Premier League came back, you wouldn't you'd refuse to watch it? I didn't say that. I just said I'd I'd rather it didn't you come back. To, but you will do if they do. So they know people will watch. They do indeed. So they're oh my god. <laughs> It's weird going into the the minds of a be- of these beasts, man. <laughs> it's tough, man. It's a it's a tough decision, and I'm not. No, who knows who's right? I don't know. If I'm right, I don't know. It comes down to e- the economy, and people are going to argue that people are just at home, not earning anything, and they're just you know, and people are out of work. I mean, in America, apparently something like sixteen percent or something like that of the workforce is currently unemployed, which is it's just getting ridiculous. Which is probably why Donald Trump is saying, with vaccine or no vaccine, we're coming back. <laughs> because the effect of this on the on the virus, the effect of the, the effect of the virus on the economy has been devastating, and it's no wonder why people are rushing to get people back to work. And and I can understand that. So it's I don't I don't know I I don't know. It's a case of are we choosing to save people's lives or are we choosing to save the economy? Luckily, I'm not the one who has to make the decisions. Do you know how I would answer that question about how to restart football? And this isn't whether it's right or wrong. I would probably follow in a similar fashion that the Premier League are looking to reintroduce football in a sense that you slowly reintroduce players and distance stand protocols bit by bit 
so I think I, I do agree. It's just the, the, the only probably the only parts of disagree, disagreement will be the time periods in which they've implemented and gone with the go ahead. I, I think it's like, for example, I didn't think it was terrible with how they did the uh, did the UFC 249 event in a sense that they tested everybody before, during, after, and there was no problems with it. So I think the first phase of training is probably going to be in, in that similar fashion where you're not getting that many people mixing and so on, and you're not increasing that chance of spread and i feel like you should probably synchronize each phase with the steps of how the uk is doing in terms of the death and cases ratio at that time and and match that yeah just match each phase with the current case standard and i think that's the best way to go about it and yes once for example if we're in a category three phase out of five then we should push on look to push on to the next phase as we start to get to category one then we should look to get into match status and then soon when for example vaccine and so on is looked out that's when you look at reintroducing fans and so on so that's how i think that's how you re re reintroduce football back into the uk during this covid period that's fair it makes sense but yeah i think the current right now the the hesitation is because we we haven't finished off the previous season the loss of money from the previous season so that's why they're pushing it out and yeah it's just basically a whole wide mess it definitely comes up to money oh everything does to be fair but yeah speaking of sports right you know i've been watching actually i, I mentioned a couple of episodes ago the last dance right i'm in the so i've just finished it yeah a lot of people have been talking about it today it's honestly the greatest sports documentary i've ever seen in my life really that's a big statement big statement and i stand by it i have loved watching it and i'll definitely watch it again in the in the in the, in the future 100 it, this won't be the only time i watch it it is amazing it literally you, i watch it and it, it inspires me to just achieve greatness and just achieve excellence in no matter what i'm doing because if you see how much effort michael jordan put in yeah like he, honestly he's honestly the goat honestly has to be is this because, solely just focus on michael jordan no no so it's based on he is kind of like the 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 main person in the documentary that they focus on but it's about the whole team in general so they do they do talk about people's lives like so kind of like scotty pippen who was basically mike's number two dennis rodman steve kerr who is the current warriors coach so he the latest episode i watched so episode nine was it basically focused it focused a bit on steve kerr and i didn't realize this right but so he won he won three championships with the bulls in 96 97 98 right and then the bulls team broke up and they tried to do a rebuild but he went to san antonio spurs and then won won it with them as well so he basically did a four p so he won it four years in a row and then won it again in 2003 with, with the spurs again but then has now won three more championships as a coach so he has eight nba championships in total and it's it's, it's amazing because you don't you don't really you don't really sometimes you always hear about michael jordan michael jordan and sometimes it's good to like learn about or to know other people's stories so kind of like it was it was amazing to hear about dennis rodman's story and his life and he's a nutter but i actually love him <laughs> because i've never seen the one that went to make friends with yeah, yeah. He's the one that went to North Korea. Yeah. I'm not surprised he's crazy. <laughs> yeah, he is a madman. But he was he was himself and didn't apologize for that. He was just, this is me, take it or leave it. And I I loved that. Oh, yeah, it was just, I, it was good. I really enjoyed it. And just to... Uh, like to learn about some of the other players and how they fit into that into the whole storyline and stuff it was just fantastic it's honestly it's a fantastic documentary 10 episodes you will regret watching honestly you'll love it i loved it it doesn't you don't have to be a basketball fan i was literally about to ask that or do you have to or do you think if if you're not someone who even cares about sports that it will make an impact i think if you're someone who wants to be inspired by someone trying to achieve greatness no matter like for example i can i can watch it so i may not be into like maybe another sport or another another maybe like music or whatever but if that person is trying to achieve something that is literally fun like excellence at, at something that has never been done before you will be fascinated i will be fascinated by it and it doesn't matter what it is necessarily as far as it's like wow this has actually never been done before and someone is about to do this so maybe it's because i like basketball and i'm and, and but i also do think that whether you like basketball or not you will appreciate the documentary and i may be wrong maybe people look at it like nah they may watch a couple of episodes and be like, nah, this is only for basketball fans. But I honestly genuinely believe that anyone can can watch it and enjoy it and appreciate someone striving for greatness. That's what I believe. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's 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 cool. That's cool. I, I, I will watch it, I guess. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, to be fair, I think that would that would probably actually be. Do you know what the timing of that coming out is probably very useful for a lot of people in lockdown. Actually, we were talking about mental health and everything, and I think that will give a lot of people a boost, saying, "Oh, okay, cool. There's so much more I can do. I ain't seen it yet, but I'm getting the gist of the what you can get out of it." So that's that's pretty sweet. That and then that actually leads me on to recommendations. What what are your recommendations for this week, Jace? The Last Dance. Straight straight up. You had, you've never you never heard of it. You know, you'd heard me talk about it. I recommend The Last Dance to anybody. That's literally only the only thing i'm recommending that's like tv based sound sound and yeah. for me yeah. i that i've not really watched like, like i said last week i, I started ozark but I've, I've, i'm still on the same episode i haven't like pushed forward with that just just not really been on it with the tv shows or anything this week the only thing i i, I watched for a bit was it's always sunny in, in philadelphia which took me like a couple of episodes to get into but once you're into it it's like it's so funny it, it's a great show if so if you need a laugh or whatever that is what i would recommend it is a good show actually yeah did you like it yeah i i, I i've never finished it all but the ones that i've watched i just thought this is dumb but i laughed do you know what i like about it mostly is the fact that these characters the the main characters it's probably the only show where I've come across where the main characters are all assholes, basically. Yeah. Every other show that I can think of, you can get behind. They're all such good, yeah. clean the characters. <laughs> Which, yeah, pretty much. This show takes pride in the fact that they're just general jerks, man. They're the, they're the worst people ever. But yeah, there's something that you just... Like, for example, probably Charlie's my favourite character. And he's just, he's, there's something that's really lovable about him and the others are just, yeah, just, just dicks, man. <laughs> what do you reckon? No, I, I agree. I agree with you. Like you're like, oh, like this is funny, but th- these, I yeah, this is not. I don't co-sign this behavior at all. <laughs> and like, <laughs> it's cool because like every episode, you're just like, surely they can't get any worse than this. And like that, that's what like yeah, and that's what really builds interest for me. And I, I'm just like, what, 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 what crazy thing are they gonna do next? So that's this is a unique show, and I, I that's I give props to them on that. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. It's worth a watch. So yeah, so that's my recommendation. Uh, anything outside of entertainment? Um, definitely. I mean, like we said, it's mental health week or mental health awareness week. So definitely, I think stuff like so there's an app that some I've, I've heard about before called calm i think maybe similar to maybe something like headspace as well so i'd recommend those kind of apps something that can help you focus and just basically work on your mental health don't we can all strive for physical greatness or trying to achieve something in life but we also need to look after our brains because that's what powers us in everything we do so look after your mental health for me i think the physical side it's not just about the physical aspect but yes looking after yourself physically makes a massive contribution to helping your your mind as well so yeah carry on taking walks if you're in the uk you've got unlimited allocation of time to do that now so yeah just just if you're not if you don't have any gym gym equipment or whatever just at least go for a walk uh, just get some fresh air when you can. Obviously, adhere to social distancing rules and whatnot. Blah blah blah. But yeah, get some exercise. Get some. Sleep. All right, like I'm just sounding like a parent, but you know, you know that you know the deal. You know the deal. <laughs> I don't want to sound too much like a dad. Like go outside and do what not. But yeah, that's 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 my recommendation. So that that's that for I said. Yeah, what do you reckon? That's that for this week, Jace. Definitely, definitely. We hope you enjoyed it again, as always. Yeah, we've we've taken a lot more of a, let's say, a bit more of a, how how do I say it? It, it's been an educational podcast episode this week this week and i think that, that was pretty cool thanks for that info jace <laughs> <laughs> and i think you can give them one more bit of educational info what is our socials jace so for our fans in case you've never heard of it before canvas of life know our name our brand so our socials on instagram canvas dot of dot life one nope that's wrong <laughs> <laughs> take two <laughs> <laughs> we go again. Yeah. Instagram, canvas.of.life underscore. Twitter, canvas of life one. Facebook, canvas of life. And our website, canvas hyphen of hyphen life.com. We hope you will join us again next time. Until then, please stay alert. See you next time. Goodbye. It's been a pleasure. Till next time. 